Spanish colonization of the islands that comprise the present-day country of the Philippines spanned over three centuries, from 1565 to 1898. Throughout this period, Spanish rule did not extend to much of the southern third of the archipelago, which comprises the island of Mindanao and Sulu archipelago. A great majority of the inhabitants of Mindanao and Sulu were Muslims, whom the Spanish called Moros, a term they originally ascribed to North African Muslims who had invaded and occupied the Iberian Peninsula from the 8th to 15th centuries. In the 17th to early 18th centuries, a constant state of war existed between the Spanish and Moros. This resulted from the Moros slave raiding attacks on Christian towns and villages in the Visayas and Luzon, and the Spanish reprisal expeditions into Moro areas, leading to reciprocal attacks from the Moros and the constant cycle of raids and counter raids. But by the 1850s, the introduction of steam powered gunboats finally gave Spain the definitive advantage. The Moro raid stopped, pirate layers were attacked, and the naval blockade prevented Moros from bringing in firearms from abroad. By the 1870s, Spain had established coastal garrisons in Mindanao from where they launched attacks on Moro settlements in the interior. Then in April 1898, war broke out between Spain and the United States. In December 1898, a peace treaty ended the war, wherein Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States. But then, war broke out in Luzon and the Visayas between the United States and Filipino revolutionaries who had been fighting an independence war from Spain since 1896. Some American units also occupied the Spanish garrisons in Mindanao and Sulu, but applied a policy of non-interference with the Moros with the signing of a non-aggression agreement with the Sulu Sultanate in order to not be simultaneously embroiled in two wars. By mid-1902, U.S. forces had quelled the last major Filipino revolutionary resistance in Luzon. Consequently, more U.S. troops were moved to the south to confront the Moros, whom the U.S. government was determined to bring under its full authority. Fighting broke out in May 1902 following the killing of American soldiers by bands of Moros. In the clash known as the Battle of Bayan, U.S. forces captured two Moro fortified settlements known as Cotas. In July 1902, the U.S. command in Mindanao made plans to take full control of the Lanao region, preferably through negotiations but using military force if needed. Captain John Pershing, tasked to undertake this mission, took great efforts to foster friendly relations with the Lanao Moros and in a number of peace conferences with tribal leaders, he won over a majority of the sultans and datus. but a number of chieftains remained defiant. In April to May 1903, Pershing launched his march across Lake Lanao, where U.S. forces overran several Moro quotas. Thereafter, Lanao came under U.S. military control. In July 1903, General Leonard Wood was named governor of the newly formed Moro province. Wood was determined, using force if necessary, to end the Moros' medieval-era political and social structures. He abolished slavery, imposed a poll tax, and implemented policies to end the Moros' warrior culture, slave raiding, and bloody clan wars. Wood's aggressive policies provoked the Moros, and his term as governor was the bloodiest and most intense phase of the war. In 1903, Datu Hassan led an uprising in Holo to oppose the ban on slavery. In October 1903, U.S. forces overran Hassan's mountain fortress, eventually killing him in another battle in March 1904. In April 1904, U.S. forces attacked and destroyed 130 Moro Kotas in Taraka when a sultan refused to join a peace conference called by General Wood. In Cotabato, Dato Ali led an uprising also to oppose the ban on slavery. Scores of skirmishes took place in 1904 to 1906 before U.S. forces captured Datu Ali's stronghold in Serenaya. In October 1906, Datu Ali was killed in another encounter in Simpatan, which ended major resistance to American rule in Cotabato. In March 1904, the U.S. government revoked the Bates Agreement, ending the Sulu Sultanate's autonomous status. 
U.S. forces then occupied Holo, placing it under military control. Wood's policies were also extremely unpopular in Sulu, leading to heightened tensions. Then in March 1906, several hundred defiant Moros built quotas in Bad Daho, an extinct volcano located south of Holo. Also in these quotas were women and children. After failed negotiations with American authorities, U.S. forces stormed the quotas, resulting in perhaps up to 1,000 Moros killed. The operation generated a firestorm of controversy that reached the top levels of the U.S. government, with critics condemning it as wanton slaughter since casualties included many women and children. In turn, U.S. military authorities explained that the presence of civilians in these quotas naturally led to high civilian casualties and that the women were armed and fought alongside the men and used their children as human shields. By the end of General Wood's tenure, hundreds of armed encounters had taken place, resulting in some 5,000 Moros and 200 U.S. soldiers killed. As well, hundreds of quotas had been destroyed and large areas of Moro province were laid to waste. In February 1906, General Tasker Bliss succeeded as governor of Moro Province. His tenure was a marked contrast to his predecessor, as General Bliss did not launch any large-scale operations and focused on the social and economic development of the Moro region. Consequently, Moros called this period of no large-scale fighting as the Peace Era. However, to achieve this level of peace, Bliss tolerated some level of lawlessness, causing critics to accuse him of inaction. In November 1909, John Pershing, now a brigadier general, returned and succeeded as governor of Moro Province. His tenure, like that of General Bliss, so greatly improved relations between the U.S. Army and the Moro people. Even so, opposition to the U.S. Army's presence continued. In Zamboanga, thousands of defiant Moros gathered on Mount Baburan where they built quotas. Then in Davao, the highland Manobo people, a non-Moro tribe, went on a killing rampage. In both cases, General Pershing used a great deal of diplomacy to persuade the defiant natives to return to the fold of the law. By 1911, law and order continued to be a major problem in Moro province. Bandits and outlaws roamed the countryside and attacks by Juramentados and Amoks were an ever-present danger to American and Christian Filipino soldiers, just as it had been for the Spanish army before them. Pershing attributed the persistent violence to the Moros warrior culture and on September 1911, he enacted a ban on possessing weapons, both firearms and blades. Opposition to the ban was fierce, compliance was negligible, juramentado attacks increased, and religious leaders called for jihad against U.S. forces. Armed resistance also increased. In December 1911, hundreds of Moros in Sulu built quotas in Bad Daho in preparation for battle. American authorities, not wanting a repeat of the carnage in Bad Daho five years earlier, used a great deal of diplomacy to persuade most of the defiant Moros to descend the mountain and return to their homes. The few dozen that remained were subject to an attack by U.S. authorities using an all-Moro unit where the quotas were destroyed. In another instance of defiance to the weapons ban, in June 1913 in Sulu, Datu Nagib Amil and hundreds of his followers built quotas in Bad Bagsak. A U.S. contingent overwhelmed Amil's forces in five days of bitter fighting. Then in October 1913, U.S. forces overran the quotas in Mount Talipao in Holo built by hundreds of defiant Moro warriors. Towards the end of 1913, U.S. authorities deemed Moro province to be thoroughly pacified. The Moros had been disarmed, resistance had been broken, and peace was being brought to the region. Military rule ended and the province transitioned to a civilian government. Social and economic policies were accelerated, infrastructures such as schools and hospitals were built, and more Moro communities were integrated into the local civil governance and reforms to the justice system were adopted to be more attuned to traditional Moro customs. <laughs>